the concept of the swing plane can be a really elusive one, even for better golfers. So right after this, let's talk a little bit more about the swing planes and how the two halves of the circle going around the plane need to kind of match up for you to get your most accurate results. Stay tuned. All right, so the implications of being, quote, on plane are not only getting the club head to be on a good path, neutral path into the ball to create the most straight shots or straight tendency, but also the hand path, the path of the, the mid hands point. We'd also like that to be tracking around the correct arc, not only into the ball, but past it as well. Now, of course, you have seen, I hope, if not, you should look this up, the Hogan Glass photo that he has in his Five Lessons book. And he talked about a pane of glass running from the ball through the base of the neck and out the other way. So it's something like this. And what he wanted us to do, what he warned us about, was not being above the glass. So anywhere on the pane of glass or as far under as you wanted to go is going to be pretty much okay. So what this means is that we have a, a range that we can put the swing plane on as long as it's not too vertical. So you just have to get somewhere in between the overly steep or vertical and the overly shallow or horizontal and each of those has its own issues. So once you've strayed as a lot of people will do as they come over the top like this, you've broken through the Hogan glass and now coming down this vertically, not only will make you tend to swing out to in, but also you're not going to get the kick from the handle into the head to bring the head around and square it up. The kick is going to be more upwards than around to the left and upwards. There's a little too much vertical in the exit of the handle, and that's going to tend to leave the club face open. Now, that's where a lot of the slices come from, not necessarily swinging out to in. Out to in by itself is only a small percentage influence on whether or not you're going to slice the ball. Conversely, if we were to swing too flat down here, uh, we would have a big issue, number one, with low point control. We would have a lot of divots behind the ball, and number two, we'd have to turn our body a heck of a lot more, and that's not for everybody. So just understand you can't bring it down below, let's say, the forearm, because then it starts to be hard to match it up uh, on the follow through. All right, so that being said, there are kind of three categories that at least guys on tour fall into in the acceptable range. So again, you have above the Hogan glass is no good, it's not going to lead to good shots and way, way below the Hogan glass, way down at the bottom. That's also going to be a little problematic for most golfers. So here's a few examples, three examples of swing planes that you'll see commonly on the PGA Tour. Here you're going to see, let's say, a swing plane that looks more like this, and that's kind of cutting more right through my shoulder. So you could call this a, a shoulder planer. Somebody who does this, you could call them a shoulder planer. Uh, this might be a swing. You might see a uh, style like Scotty Scheffler, for example. He's more of a shoulder planer, very upright at the top. And the whole wheel just continues to follow symmetrically, just like that. So that means his exit is going to match up. And it's going to go right, kind of right through the other shoulder on his way out. Okay, then you have somebody like a Tiger Woods, who is more of a mid-arm planer. So halfway down, you're going to kind of see the shaft cut right through the middle of his bicep, right there. And then the exit is going to be fairly symmetrical. It's going to be lower and around, coming out a little bit flatter to match the slightly flatter uh, slot position. So they're going to match up. So Tiger, you might see looking a little bit more like this with his swing plane. So kind of halfway down the arm. 
Uh, and then you'll get the, uh, the, the flatter, the shallower swingers. Let's take a look at, say, a Cam Smith. Um, Cam Smith is more shallow in the slot. You might call him a, a forearm planer, something like that. So that club is lining up with the forearm halfway down. And of course, you see from the nature of the arc here, his exit will have to be a little bit more sharply to the left right after impact with his handle if he's going to make the two match up. Again, the nature of the circle or the, the, the plane that you're on, and of course this is a kind of a rudimentary, a circle and an arc, kind of a rud rudimentary description of what the club head and the shaft are actually doing. It's really a little more complex than that, but just like we can use a stick figure sometimes for golf, we can also use arcs and circles. So the flatter I go, or the shallower, I, lower I make this plane, get it flatter and shallower, you can see the handle is gonna come in from very much on the inside, and then it's gotta exit sharply around to the left. Well, somebody like a Scotty Scheffler, he'll come in a little bit more straight down the line with this club because it's going kind of through his shoulder and his exit is not going to be quite as severely left. Now the object is if you want to get your club on a good plane to hit some really really consistently straight shots we like the two to match up so we want the we want if you split it in half right down my feet here you've got a 360 degrees circle here and cut this hula hoop in half, you've got this side, this 180 degrees, and you've got this 180 degrees, and you simply want them to match up one with the other. So let's take a club now. We'll look at the Cameron Smith example, the last example. And so he's coming in from the forearm like this, much more shallower. And so that handle needs to exit and it needs to match. So halfway down to halfway through, you see how those two kind of matched like they were on the hula hoop. Then you have the more upright version like a Scotty Scheffler, who's more up at the top of the swing. He comes down at about more about this angle. So the club shaft is through the shoulder. And then his exit can be a lot more vertical as well. So that kind of cut back through my other shoulder and hopefully the two angles kind of matched up. So when they do it's a pretty good bet that your club path is quite neutral and your hand path is probably pretty solid too. Now without a track man you can also use the down the line video for yourself to kind of measure what your swing plane or your path might be um, if it's off. So if it's off what you're looking for is let's say that I I'm coming in on the forearm with my driver, long iron, whatever, but then I'm going to exit out to the right and not continue curving around the body. You see, my exit is going to come out through my shoulder or even above the shoulder in that case. So you're going from really low on the slot to really high on the exit. You can be pretty confident that that's going to be a, an exaggerated inside to out club path. And a lot of you out there who struggle with distance and maybe slicing, you might be coming through the shoulder here or even above the shoulder here, and then your exit is low like that. So if you're going kind of from high to low on the video, then you can tell yourself, well, you're probably path that's way outside to in. All right, let me hit one and we'll take a look at where I'm at on my planes. Do they match up? And which level am I at? All right, looking back at that swing I just took in slow-mo, you can kind of see I'm not exactly matched up perfectly a lot of the time 
That swing was a little bit more coming down on the forearm, close to it, somewhere between mid and on the forearm, halfway down. But my exit was a little bit higher than that. So you could either say a couple things. You could either say my hand path is not quite taking the curve, or you could also say my club path might be excessively inside to out. Now to get the best results from your filming, you really want to put the camera lined up perfectly with the hand path. So right where the handle sits at the moment of address, you'd really like to have the camera on the line extended back even with that. All right, hey, hopefully these ideas illustrate a little bit better in your mind uh, how to navigate the concept of the swing plane and also how to be a better coach to yourself as you now know better what to look for on your own video. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve and as usual I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.